Happy Duck. Uh, today is not a great day for me. I started out pretty good. Uh, for, for like the first two hours, my day was, was alright. I was like, I'm gonna get up and uh, get to do my morning routine, go to the gym, go to get groceries, get some beer, because I have decided that if, once again, that every time I see my parents that I should drink a little alcohol beforehand because it will help me get through it uh, quite a bit. Uh, but that plan uh, dissolved at around 8 or 8.30 a.m. when I went outside to go to my car. I was all ready for the gym. Dressed for the gym, was in my shorts and my t-shirt. Thought about a tank top and then put it on and decided against it. Uh, got outside, had my backpack, forget if I said that. And my car was not there. Uh, it was... It was gone. I looked around. It was, it was not over there. It was not over there. Uh, uh, the parking lot uh, that my complex has, it was just gone. So, it was stolen, basically. Not basically, it was stolen. That is what happened. It's, it's, there's, there's no need to qualify that statement. That is the reality. <sighs> I don't know if, my, if I'm going to get my car back. If I'm going to have to get a new car somehow that I can't afford. But I do know that for the foreseeable future, I will not be driving myself anywhere, which is fucking horrifying for me. Because I really need to be able to get around. Partly because there's just there's there's things I need to do. It is admittedly mainly just going to the gym and going to the grocery store, but those are things I need to do. And if I can't get there on my own, I have to then use my taxi dad, uh, which which is a term that I thought up just minutes ago. He's always, my dad is always happy to drive me around and do whatever. That's not the issue with Taxi Dad. The issue is that I then have to spend more time with my dad. And the man does not know how to talk to me. <laughs> so now if I want to go to the gym or if I want to go to the grocery store or if I want to go hang out with a friend somewhere, I'm probably going to have to go through Taxi Dad, which means we won't be talking about our feelings, uh, we won't be having a heart-to-heart, -heart. We, we won't be talking about me or my life, um, we'll, we'll just be talking about whatever the fuck my dad happens to have on his mind, whatever comes to him, we're going to talk about that. Like earlier today, he took me to Safe Mart, and we talked a little bit about how I felt violated because my car had been stolen, and that quickly got into car thieves in general. Russians who apparently steal cars a lot, and chop shops, and stealing copper, and none of that was really about me. <laughs> it wasn't really about him either. It was just something he thought of that he wanted to talk about because he's old and lonely and has one friend, I think, and really wants to spend more time with me. Not my mom, they 
do not seem to enjoy each other's company. And he got a little bit of time with me today, uh, some of which I just did what my parents do, I just talked at. And he doesn't have that great a hearing, so it's not like he could hear me half the time anyway. So I was just speaking for myself the way that my parents do. And now I'm going to have to go through that every time I want to drive somewhere. Uh, could be worse. Uh, I could be a homeless schizophrenic that doesn't even have a car to be stolen. I could be my neighbor who's like 40 feet that way, maybe 80 feet, I don't know. She doesn't have a car, she walks the safe way. So it's, it's you know, it's, it's, it's not like this is horrible. Uh, it's just, it happened this morning, and so it is still very present for me. And I think that's why I've had a fairly bad headache for like an hour or two maybe. And I've just been lying down and thinking about, oh god, I have to spend so much time with my parents, particularly my dad. Which, it's not like spending time with them is all that bad, but... If it becomes added to every time I need to go to the grocery store, or go to the gym, or go see a friend, it's, it's just I'm adding a little bit of suffering to it. And it's, it's kind of fucked up to say it's annoying that it's true for me, because, you know, I would love it if I could see my parents and just be like, ah, I'm so happy to see you guys. Don't we all really love each other and get along well? Oh God, I can't. I, I wish we could spend more time with each other because of how enjoyable and satisfying our interactions are. <sighs> anyway, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Go to the gym less, I guess. Uh, ration my food so that I can go to the grocery store less. I did get a six-pack of uh, possibly the strongest beer that Save Mart had, so I will be rationing that. Uh, I had one of them earlier, and one of, one of those beers is like two beers, uh, and I haven't been drinking very much, so it hit me. It made me more just like sleepy. <laughs> it did help me mellow out a bit, but there is a lot of calories in those beers. Now I'll probably be going to the gym less, so gain the weight there. And it's not like I can have my dad drop me off at a date somewhere. That would be horrifying. <laughs> really embarrassing. It's just, it sucks. I filed a police report and have probably never had such a positive reaction towards police officers as I did when I called them on the phone. Cops are really nice when they're on the phone. Uh, it's in person that they're scary, but when they're on the phone and you're, you've called them because you need help, they're nice. It's like, ah, authority is going to help me somehow. They're very reassuring. They're just, they're there to help. They're not there to talk about themselves and their lives and whatever interests them and make little judgmental comments about other people. They're just there to help. It's nice. And I called my insurance company talked to a guy who had like a really soothing voice uh, I wish I could just like I, I wish I wish he had an ASMR channel that I could, I could listen to because 
guy's voice was very relaxing. What I plan to do tomorrow, though, for my weekly brunch and tangent, um, should I? Maybe I should practice just looking at the camera lens while I speak, so that I can kind of be practicing like with talking to a human where you know you want to be looking in someone's eye into their eyes when you're talking at least some of the time which at the moment I don't do at all so maybe I should practice that and then going back Because I know my dad wants to spend more time with me, I'm I'm going to I plan to tell him tomorrow <clears throat> the magic words that he can say that will get me to actually want to spend time with him, um, which is for him to just say, "Let's get a drink." If he would just pause it, if he would just put forward the idea that we would be meeting, that we, that we would be speaking, and alcohol would be involved, that would make me much more interested in that interaction. Because not only is the alcohol going to curb my anxiety about my relationship with my parents and the quality of our interactions, it's also just going to make me more social in general, sociable it's going to make me enjoy um, just, just having a conversation more. And then also because it would be like parent-sanctioned alcohol by being that would be that would be nice. <laughs> My parents are very square. They don't like to they don't really drink. They don't smoke. They certainly don't snort or shoot. They just, they eat food, and they watch TV, and they make little comments about each other, and I try to ignore them. The comments, I mean, I, I don't ignore them completely when we hang out. We do, I do try to have a conversation with them. It's just hard to talk to them. Like, anytime I get upset and emotional, their reaction is just to, like think that, well, you know, that's Charlie's ha having one of his days, you know, he'll, he'll feel better later, you know, and it's like, no, I always feel that way, I'm just, usually I'm better at keeping it down so that you guys don't have to deal with it, and, and not expressing it, I'm trying to not rock the boat, because I kind of don't think they can handle it, but then I also think that they just don't. They don't want to deal with it. They, they just they want things to be simple. They, for example, don't want to go to therapy, which they should. Uh, I really wish they would go to marriage therapy, marriage counseling. I mean, I should be in an actual therapy too, but I'm at least doing this and, and thinking about my life and my mind and my interactions with people and my relationships. And I don't think they do. It really depresses me. God, I want my fucking car back. At least for now, I have chocolate chip cookies from Safeway. Which will last me Maybe through tomorrow, and then I have alcohol. And if I if I'm really desperate, I can get alcohol and and weed delivered. And I shouldn't I shouldn't be smoking and drinking at all, really. But if I have my car stolen, that tends to make me suffer a lot, puts me in a bad mood, it gives me the fucking headache I have right now, 
that makes me weak, and then I succumb, and then I give in, and then, you know, a little inebriation, and you temporarily uh, suffer less. Is it going to come back on me in the long term? Yeah. But in the long term, I'm going to have a car. So, this is just a temporary unhealthy solution to a shitty problem that is making me very sad, anxious, and really want to go to the gym. I love exercise so much. I feel so whiny self-entitled complaining about this. Like, mm, I don't have a car anymore. Mm, I'll get another one eventually. My life is so bad. My dad wants to spend time with me, but I don't feel like it. Yeah, what a, I don't know how whiny loser I am. <laughs> it's, like, it's not even really that big of a deal. It's just temporary. I'll, I'll drive again. It's not like I'm never gonna drive again. This isn't this isn't a life sentence of annoyance. And like, there's so many people that, that have it worse off than me. And who, like, if they heard me complain like this, they would be like, you know, world's tiniest violin for this fucking d bag over here thinks they have it so bad, and it feels like I have it so bad, but logically, I, I like, intellectually, I, I know, I don't, it's basically fine, but, I mean, that is kind of the purpose of me doing the silent therapy, doc, <laughs> it's supposed to be up here, doc, there we go. Uh, it's a chance for me to reflect and get things out um, potentially in order to notice uh, how ridiculous they are, how not bad they are, temporary, stuff like that. I guess that's all. I mainly just wanted to complain about my car getting stolen. Those bastards. It's probably just one bastard, but... I mean, if, if someone stole my car, it's not like they did, did it, because it was probably not for fun. No, this is probably... Like, this is probably how they make money. Maybe they were on the run from the law, I don't know. That would be cool be kind of awesome to get my car back and then find out it's got blood stains everywhere because they were using it to transport dead bodies. And then I could write about that. That would be pretty rad. So I feel a lot better about this now. <laughs> um, I, have a lot of, I have a lot of good things going for me. Uh, such as my hair. It's great got a nice face, for st still, for now. I've got uh, a pretty good shave, pretty smart. I wish I was better in every way, but what are you going to do? My nails look pretty, pretty sweet. She needs to do more on this hand, but I'll do that eventually. I can do that right now. After I stop. And I also found a new game called King God Castle, I think. Which is actually really fun. It has no story. And I think it would... I think it's an auto chess kind of game. I don't actually know what auto chess is, so I should not throw that term around. But it's, uh, it's pretty fun. You just summon your units and then you 
place them on a field and then you hit start and they fight the other team and, and then you do that over and over again a thousand times and it makes you happier <laughs> uh, because it's getting a nice it, it does a really good job of I suppose activating my dopaminergic reward system I think it's called which is reminding me that I need to read more of Behave by Dr. Robert M. Sapolsky. Other good thing, uh, I've done... I've gone through most of my poetry notebooks like this. I'm on... I'm currently on Poems 5, which is the fifth of the large... largest poetry notebooks that I have written in... Written in probably have gotten through all of them and I mean I'll, I'll probably be finished by the at least by the end of this month if not sooner so that's actually pretty cool like that's 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 me getting closer to being able to say that I've published a book I won't make me any money, but, you know, it's, it's fine. <laughs> it's more about um, continuing the creative journey than it is about getting a bunch of money. Ultimately, I would like to get a bunch of money, but in order to get there, I'm going to need like 10 to 20 more years of unpaid writing before it becomes lucrative, if, if it ever does, which it might not, and that would be disappointing, but that is something that I will face uh, when the time comes, although I will have to get a job fairly soon. Uh, I said I was going to start looking for a job when my checking account hit $2,000 and I'm like $16 away from that um, so that's something to keep in mind maybe I'll get to work with, with kids again, maybe babies that would be pretty awesome I would probably need a car to drive to work but that's in the future other things I have to look forward to, uh, well, eventually I'm going to get married. I'm currently single, so that'll be way off. Uh, I haven't been looking at the camera all the time, but I do hope to someday, uh, like, get married and have a happy marriage where I enjoy spending time with my spouse and uh, really appreciate them and like them and love them and like being around them and, you know, have, have them be a source of positivity and be a source of positivity for them and eventually have kids. That would be fun. I don't know if fun's the right word, but that'll be rewarding. It'll be great for, for at least a little bit, like when they're babies. I know they're hella work as babies, but that is my favorite age group, so I will, I do look forward to having my own baby. Maybe not, I don't know if, I'll, if I want to have babies, but at least one baby. We'll see. Dep depends what, 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 what the baby's mother thinks and, and what, uh, what, what agreement we come to through an equal conversation of partners, which is something my parents don't seem to do. I've already covered the, the, my parents' thing for for this this session now. Is there anything else I want to talk about? I went for a walk and and looked for my car. <laughs> a crazy idea, but the 
part of me was like, what if it's around the corner and I could just drive it back? I didn't find it on the walk, obviously, but I went on a walk. It went, and it was in kind of like a, some, it's like a semi-shocked, Haze. It's not the word I was looking for, but I think days. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I was in a weird trance-like state as I was going on this walk, and so I would, normally I would have been self-conscious about like people in the neighborhood seeing me because I grew up here. And I worry they look at me and they're like, "That guy's still here. I remember when he was this high." I'm just like, "Yes, I'm the loser that's still here." I get it. But on the walk I took, it was... It was, it was fine. It was just like, it was in my own world, it was in my head, it was in my own suffering. I didn't really notice other people that much. It was nice. I wasn't, I wasn't like worrying about them. <laughs> I was worried about driving and cars stuff. Another plus side, uh, I don't have to register my car, <laughs> or I don't have to get the smog test, <laughs> uh, because I can't. Silver lining. I think that's probably going to do it. I do feel a lot better having recorded this self-therapizing session. So that's good. And let's see, we're now already we're at 27 minutes. So let's keep getting longer and longer. Partly might be because I'm sitting in a place where I'm not worried about being overheard. I'm going to call it there. Thank you, Doc. And I will see you.